Brought to you by wikivd.com Forbidden City The Forbidden City was the Chinese imperial palace from the Ming Dynasty to the end of the Qing Dynasty, the years 1420 to 1912. It is in the center of Beijing, China, and now houses the Palace Museum. It served as the home of emperors and their households as well as the ceremonial and political center of Chinese government. For almost 500 years, constructed from 1406 to 1420, the complex consists of 980 buildings and covers 72 hectares. The palace complex exemplifies traditional Chinese palatial architecture, and has influenced cultural and architectural developments in East Asia and elsewhere. The Forbidden City was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987 and is listed by UNESCO as the largest collection of preserved ancient wooden structures in the world. Since 1925 the Forbidden City has been under the charge of the Palace Museum, whose extensive collection of artwork and artifacts were built upon the imperial collections of the Ming and Qing dynasties. Part of the museum's former collection is now in the National Palace Museum in Taipei. Both museums descend from the same institution but were split after the Chinese Civil War. Since 2012 the Forbidden City has seen an average of 15 million visitors annually, and had 16 million visitors in 2016. Name The common English name Forbidden City is a translation of the Chinese name Zijin Cheng. The name Zijin Cheng first formally appeared in 1576. Another English name of similar origin is Forbidden Palace. The name Zijin Cheng is a name with significance on many levels. Zio. Purple refers to the North Star which in ancient China was called the Ziwei Star. And in traditional Chinese astrology was the heavenly abode of the Celestial Emperor. The surrounding celestial region the Ziwei enclosure was the realm of the Celestial Emperor and his family. The Forbidden City as the residence of the Terrestrial Emperor was its earthly counterpart. Jinnah Forbidden referred to the fact that no one could enter or leave the palace without the Emperor's permission. Cheng means a city. Today, the site is most commonly known in Chinese as Gugong which means the former palace. The museum which is based in these buildings is known as the Palace Museum. History when Hongu Emperor's son Zhu Dai became the Yongol Emperor he moved the capital from Nanjing to Beijing, and construction began in 1406 on what would become the Forbidden City. Construction lasted 14 years and required more than a million workers. Material used include whole logs of precious Phoebigen and wood found in the jungles of southwestern China and large blocks of marble from quarries near Beijing. The floors of major halls were paved with golden bricks, specially baked paving bricks. From Suzhou, from 1420 to 1644 the Forbidden City was the seat of the Ming Dynasty. In April 1644, it was captured by rebel forces led by Li Zicheng, who proclaimed himself Emperor of the Shun Dynasty. He soon fled before the combined armies of former Ming general Wu Sangui and Manchu forces, setting fire to parts of the Forbidden City in the process. By October, the Mancas had achieved supremacy in northern China and a ceremony was held at the Forbidden City to proclaim the young Shunji Emperor as ruler of all China under the Qing dynasty. The Qing rulers changed the names on some of the principal buildings to emphasize harmony. Rather than supremacy made the name plates bilingual and introduced shamanist elements to the palace. In 1860 during the Second Opium War, Anglo-French forces took control of the Forbidden City and occupied it until the end of the war. In 1900 Empress Tao Jisiaxi fled from the Forbidden City during the Boxer Rebellion leaving it to be occupied by forces of the Treaty Powers until the following year. 
After being the home of 24 emperors, 14 of the Ming dynasty and 10 of the Qing dynasty, the Forbidden City ceased being the political center of China in 1912. With the abdication of Pui, the last emperor of China, under an agreement with the new Republic of China government, Pui remained in the inner court, while the outer court was given over to public use until he was evicted after a coup in 1924. The Palace Museum was then established in the Forbidden City in 1925. In 1933, the Japanese invasion of China forced the evacuation of the national treasures in the Forbidden City. Part of the collection was returned at the end of World War II, but the other part was evacuated to Taiwan in 1948 under orders by Chiang Kai-shek whose Kuomintang was losing the Chinese Civil War. This relatively small, but high-quality collection was kept in storage until 1965 when it again became public as the core of the National Palace Museum in Taipei. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949 some damage was done to the Forbidden City as the country was swept up in revolutionary zeal. During the Cultural Revolution, however, further destruction was prevented when Premier Zhou Enlai sent an army battalion to guard the city. The Forbidden City was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987 by UNESCO as the Imperial Palace of the Ming and Qing dynasties due to its significant place in the development of Chinese architecture and culture. It is currently administered by the Palace Museum which is carrying out a 16-year restoration project to repair and restore all buildings in the Forbidden City to their pre-1912 state. In recent years, the presence of commercial enterprises in the Forbidden City has become controversial. A Starbucks store that opened in 2000 sparked objections and eventually closed on 13 July 2007. Chinese media also took notice of a pair of souvenir shops that refused to admit Chinese citizens in order to price gouge foreign customers in 2006. Description The Forbidden City is a rectangle with 961 meters from north to south and 753 meters from east to west. It consists of 980 surviving buildings with 8,886 bays of rooms. A common myth states that there are 9,999 rooms including antechambers based on oral tradition, and it is not supported by survey evidence. The Forbidden City was designed to be the center of the ancient walled city of Beijing. It is enclosed in a larger, walled area called the Imperial City. The Imperial City is in turn enclosed by the Inner City. To its south lies the Outer City. The Forbidden City remains important in the civic scheme of Beijing. The Central North-South Axis remains the Central Axis of Beijing. This axis extends to the south through Tiananmen Gate to Tiananmen Square the ceremonial center of the People's Republic of China and on to Yongdingmen. To the north, it extends through Jingshan Hill to the Bell and Drum Towers. This axis is not exactly aligned north-south but is tilted by slightly more than two degrees. Researchers now believe that the axis was designed in the Yuan Dynasty to be aligned with Xanadu, the other capital of their empire. Walls and Gates the Forbidden City is surrounded by a 7.9 meters high city wall and a 6 meters deep by 52 meters wide moat. The walls are 8.62 meters wide at the base, tapering to 6.66 meters at the top. These walls served as both defensive walls and retaining walls for the palace. They were constructed with a rammed earth core and surfaced with three layers of specially baked bricks on both sides with the interstices filled with mortar. At the four corners of the wall sit towers with intricate roofs boasting 72 ridges, reproducing the pavilion of Prince Teng, 
and the Yellow Crane Pavilion as they appeared in Song Dynasty paintings. These towers are the most visible parts of the palace to commoners outside the walls, and much folklore is attached to them. According to one legend, artisans could not put a corner tower back together after it was dismantled for renovations in the early Qing dynasty, and it was only rebuilt after the intervention of carpenter immortal Lu Ban. The wall is pierced by a gate on each side. At the southern end is the main meridian gate. To the north is the Gate of Divine Might which faces Jingshan Park. The east and west gates are called the East Glorious Gate and West Glorious Gate. All gates in the Forbidden City are decorated with a 9 by 9 array of golden door nails. Except for the East Glorious Gate which has only 8 rows, the Meridian Gate has two protruding wings forming three sides of a square before it. The gate has five gateways. The central gateway is part of the Imperial Way, a stone-flagged path that forms the central axis of the Forbidden City and the ancient city of Beijing itself and leads all the way from the Gate of China in the south to Dingshan in the north. Only the emperor may walk a ride on the imperial way except for the empress on the occasion of her wedding, and successful students after the imperial examination. Outer Court of the Southern Section Traditionally the Forbidden City is divided into two parts. The outer court, or front court includes the southern sections and was used for ceremonial purposes. The inner quarterback palace includes the northern sections, and was the residence of the emperor and his family and was used for day-to-day -day affairs of state. Generally the forbidden city has three vertical axes. The most important buildings are situated on the central north-south axis. Entering from the Meridian Gate one encounters a large square pierced by the meandering inner Golden Water River which is crossed by five bridges. Beyond the square stands the Gate of Supreme Harmony. Behind that is the Hall of Supreme Harmony Square. A three-tiered white marble terrace rises. From this square, three halls stand on top of this terrace the focus of the palace complex. From the south these are the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the Hall of Central Harmony, and the Hall of Preserving Harmony. The Hall of Supreme Harmony is the largest, and rises some 30 meters above the level of the surrounding square. It is the ceremonial center of imperial power and the largest surviving wooden structure in China. It is nine bays wide and five bays deep, the numbers nine and five being symbolically connected to the majesty of the emperor. Set into the ceiling, at the center of the hall is an intricate kesson decorated with a coiled dragon, from the mouth of which issues a chandelier-like set of metal balls called the Xuanyuan Mirror. In the Ming Dynasty the emperor held court here to discuss affairs of state. During the Qing Dynasty as emperors held court far more frequently, a less ceremonious location was used instead and the Hall of Supreme Harmony was only used for ceremonial purposes such as coronations, investitures and imperial weddings. The Hall of Central Harmony is a smaller square hall used by the Emperor to prepare and rest before and during ceremonies. Behind it the Hall of Preserving Harmony was used for rehearsing ceremonies and was also the site of the final stage of the imperial examination. All three halls feature imperial thrones the largest and most elaborate one being that in the Hall of Supreme Harmony. At the center of the ramps leading up to the terraces from the northern and southern sides are ceremonial ramps part of the imperial way featuring elaborate and symbolic bas-relief carvings. The northern ramp behind the Hall of Preserving Harmony is carved from a single piece of stone 16.57 meters long, 3.07 meters wide and 1.7 meters thick. It weighs some 200 tons and is the largest such carving in China. The southern ramp in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony is even longer but is made 
from two stone slabs joined together the joint was ingeniously hidden using overlapping bas relief carvings and was only discovered when weathering widened the gap in the 20th century. In the southwest and southeast of the outer court are the halls of military eminence and literary glory. The former was used at various times for the emperor to receive ministers and hold court and later housed the palace's own printing house. The latter was used for ceremonial lectures by highly regarded Confucian scholars and later became the office of the Grand Secretariat. A copy of the Siku Quanchu was stored there. To the northeast of the southern three places which was the residence of the Crown Prince. Inner Court of the Northern Section The inner court is separated from the outer court by an oblong courtyard lying orthogonal to the city's main axis. It was the home of the emperor and his family. In the Qing dynasty, the emperor lived and worked almost exclusively in the inner court with the outer court used only for ceremonial purposes. At the center of the inner court is another set of three halls. From the south these are the Palace of Heavenly Purity Hall of Union and the Palace of Earthly Tranquility, smaller than the outer court halls. The three halls of the inner court were the official residences of the emperor and the empress. The emperor representing Yang and the heavens would occupy the palace of heavenly purity. The empress representing Yin and the earth would occupy the palace of earthly tranquility. In between them was the hall of union where the Yin and Yang mixed to produce harmony. The palace of heavenly purity is a double O-leaved building and set on a single level white marble platform. It is connected to the gate of heavenly purity to its south by a raised walkway. In the Ming dynasty it was the residence of the emperor. However, beginning from the Yongzheng emperor of the Qing dynasty the emperor lived instead at the smaller hall of mental cultivation to the west out of respect to the memory of the Kangxi emperor. The palace of heavenly purity then became the emperor's audience hall. A kesson is set into the roof featuring a coiled dragon. Above the throne hangs a tablet reading, Justice and Honor. The Palace of Earthly Tranquility is a double O-leaved building nine bays wide and three bays deep. In the Ming Dynasty it was the residence of the Empress. In the Qing Dynasty, large portions of the palace were converted for shamanist worship by the new Manchu rulers. From the reign of the Yongzheng Emperor the Empress moved out of the palace. However, two rooms in the Palace of Earthly Harmony were retained for use on the Emperor's wedding night. Between these two palaces is the Hall of Union which is square in shape with a pyramidal roof. Stored here are the 25 imperial seals of the Qing dynasty as well as other ceremonial items. Behind these three halls lies the Imperial Garden relatively small and compact in design. The garden nevertheless contains several elaborate landscaping features. To the north of the garden is the Gate of Divine Might. Directly to the west is the Hall of Mental Cultivation, originally a minor palace. This became the de facto residence and office of the emperor starting from Yongzheng. In the last decades of the Qing dynasty Empress's Dowager including Cixi held court from the eastern partition of the hall. Located around the Hall of Mental Cultivation are the offices of the Grand Council and other key government bodies. The northeastern section of the inner court is taken up by the Palace of Tranquil Longevity a complex built by the Qianlong Emperor in anticipation of his retirement. It mirrors the setup of the Forbidden City proper and features an outer court and inner court, and gardens and temples. The entrance to the Palace of Tranquil Longevity is marked by a glazed tile nine dragons screen. This section of the Forbidden City is being restored in a partnership between the Palace Museum and the World Monuments Fund a long-term project expected to finish in 2017. Religion Religion was an important part of life for the imperial court. 
In the Qing dynasty, the Palace of Earthly Harmony became a place of Manchu shamanist ceremony. At the same time, the native Chinese Taoist religion continued to have an important role throughout the Ming and Qing dynasties. There were two Taoist shrines, one in the Imperial Garden and another in the central area of the inner court. Another prevalent form of religion in the Qing dynasty palace was Buddhism. A number of temples and shrines were scattered throughout the inner court including that of Tibetan Buddhism or Lamaism. Buddhist iconography also proliferated in the interior decorations of many buildings. Of these the Pavilion of the Rain of Flowers is one of the most important. It housed a large number of Buddhist statues, icons and mandalas placed in ritualistic arrangements. Surroundings The Forbidden City is surrounded on three sides by imperial gardens. To the north is Jingshan Park also known as Prospect Hill an artificial hill created from the soil excavated to build the moat and from nearby lakes. To the west lies Zhongnanhai a former royal garden centered on two connected lakes which now serves as the central headquarters for the Communist Party of China and the State Council of the People's Republic of China. To the northwest lies Beihai Park also centered on a lake connected to the southern two and a popular royal park. To the south of the Forbidden City were two important shrines the Imperial Shrine of Family or the Imperial Ancestral Temple and the Imperial Shrine of State of Beijing Shihitan, where the Emperor would venerate the spirits of his ancestors and the spirit of the nation, respectively. Today these are the Beijing Laboring People's Cultural Hall and Zhongshan Park respectively. To the south, two nearly identical gatehouses stand along the main axis. They are the Upright Gate and the more famous Tiananmen Gate which is decorated with a portrait of Mao Zedong in the center, and two placards to the left and right, Long live the People's Republic of China and Long live the great unity of the world's peoples. The Tiananmen Gate connects the Forbidden City Precinct with a modern, symbolic center of the Chinese state Tiananmen Square. While development is now tightly controlled in the vicinity of the Forbidden City, throughout the past century uncontrolled and sometimes politically motivated demolition and reconstruction has changed the character of the areas surrounding the Forbidden City. Since 2000 the Beijing municipal government has worked to evict governmental and military institutions occupying some historical buildings, and has established a park around the remaining parts of the imperial city wall. In 2004, an ordinance relating to building height and planning restriction was renewed to establish the imperial city area and the northern city area as a buffer zone for the Forbidden City. In 2005 the Imperial City and Beihai were included in the shortlist for the next World Heritage Site in Beijing. Symbolism The design of the Forbidden City from its overall layout to the smallest detail was meticulously planned to reflect philosophical and religious principles and above all to symbolize the majesty of imperial power. Some noted examples of symbolic designs include Collections The collections of the Palace Museum are based on the King Imperial Collection. According to the results of a 1925 audit, some 1.17 million pieces of art were stored in the Forbidden City. In addition, the Imperial Libraries housed a large collection of rare books and historical documents including government documents of the Ming and Qing dynasties. From 1933, the threat of Japanese invasion forced the evacuation of the most important parts of the museum's collection. After the end of World War II this collection was returned to Nanjing. However, with the Communists' victory imminent in the Chinese Civil War the nationalist government decided to ship the pick of this collection to Taiwan. 
of the 13,491 boxes of evacuated artifacts. 2,972 boxes are now housed in the National Palace Museum in Taipei. More than 8,000 boxes were returned to Beijing, but 2,221 boxes remain today in storage under the charge of the Nanjing Museum. After 1949, the museum conducted a new audit as well as a thorough search of the Forbidden City, uncovering a number of important items. In addition, the government moved items from other museums around the country to replenish the Palace Museum's collection. It also purchased and received donations from the public. Today there are over a million rare and valuable works of art in the permanent collection of the Palace Museum including paintings, ceramics, seals, steles, sculptures, inscribed wares, bronze wares, enamel objects, etc. A new inventory of the museum's collections was conducted between 2004 and 2010. Subsequently, the Palace Museum was shown to hold a total of 1,807,558 artifacts, and includes 1,684,490 items designated as nationally protected valuable cultural relics. At the end of 2016 the Palace Museum held a press conference announcing that 55,132 previously unlisted items had been discovered in an inventory check carried out from 2014 to 2016. The total number of items in the Palace Museum collection is presently at 1,862,690 objects. The Palace Museum holds 340,000 pieces of ceramics and porcelain. These include imperial collections from the Tang Dynasty and the Song Dynasty, as well as pieces commissioned by the palace and sometimes by the emperor personally. The Palace Museum holds about 320,000 pieces of porcelain from the imperial collection. The rest are almost all held in the National Palace Museum in Taipei and the Nanjing Museum. The Palace Museum holds close to 50,000 paintings. Of these more than 400 date from before the Yuan Dynasty. This is the largest such collection in China. The collection is based on the palace collection in the Ming and Qing dynasties. The personal interest of emperors such as Qianlong meant that the palace held one of the most important collections of paintings in Chinese history. However, a significant portion of this collection was lost over the years. After his abdication, Pui transferred paintings out of the palace and many of these were subsequently lost or destroyed. In 1948 many of the works were moved to Taiwan. The collection has subsequently been replenished through donations, purchases and transfers from other museums. The Palace Museum's bronze collection dates from the early Shang dynasty. Of the almost 10,000 pieces held about 1,600 are inscribed items from the pre-Qing period. A significant part of the collection is ceremonial bronzeware from the imperial court. The Palace Museum has one of the largest collections of mechanical timepieces of the 18th and 19th centuries in the world with more than 1,000 pieces. The collection contains both Chinese and foreign-made pieces. Chinese pieces came from the palace's own workshops Guangzhou and Suzhou. Foreign pieces came from countries including Britain, France, Switzerland, the United States and Japan. Of these the largest portion come from Britain. Jade has a unique place in Chinese culture. The museum's collection mostly derived from the imperial collection includes some 30,000 pieces. The pre-Yuan dynasty part of the collection includes several pieces famed throughout history, as well as artifacts from more recent archaeological discoveries. The earliest pieces date from the Neolithic period. Ming Dynasty and Qing Dynasty pieces on the other hand, include both items for palace use as well as tribute items from around the empire and beyond. 
In addition to works of art, a large proportion of the museum's collection consists of the artifacts of the imperial court. This includes items used by the imperial family and the palace in daily life, as well as various ceremonial and bureaucratic items important to government administration. This comprehensive collection preserves the daily life and ceremonial protocols of the imperial era. Influence The Forbidden City The culmination of the 2000-year development of classical Chinese and East Asian architecture has been influential in the subsequent development of Chinese architecture, as well as providing inspiration for many artistic works. Some specific examples include, The Forbidden City has served as the scene to many works of fiction. In recent years it has been depicted in films and television series. Some notable examples include, The Forbidden City has also served as a performance venue. However, its use for this purpose is strictly limited due to the heavy impact of equipment and performance on the ancient structures. Almost all performances said to be in the Forbidden City are held outside the palace walls. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?